Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to take a first look at the new Z50. Okay, so what specifications do we have inside this new Z50 and how is it different from the Z6 and Z7 and other cameras as well? Well, the biggest thing is that this is a DX size sensor. For those of you that don't use Nikon language, DX is APS-C, so a 1.5 times crop. And because the Z mount is so big, with that smaller DX sensor in the middle, it looks quite strange especially when you compare it next to the Z7 or Z6. So this DX size sensor has 20 million pixels, which is a very similar pixel count to the 7500 and also the D500. We then have an ISO range of 100 to 51,000. We can then expand that to 102,000. And I think one of the key things is, is that when you say it's only got 20 million pixels, most people then go, oh, that's quite low compared to other cameras in that same price bracket or other cameras in the same range, because you might look at 24, 26, 32, for example. Um, the key thing, though, is, is that the lower your megapixel count, the better your ISO performance. So I'm expecting this camera to perform pretty well in low light. In terms of this camera's autofocus, we have 209 focusing points that are dedicated on sensor. They are on sensor phase detect auto focusing points as well. Those focusing points allow you to use face tracking and eye tracking the same way that you would do in the Z6 and the Z7. We do have a maximum frame rate of 11 frames per second with full autofocus and full auto exposure. The screen on the back is a 1 million dot resolution screen and the key difference from this screen to the Z6 and the Z7 is that it will flip all the way around so that you can use it to view yourself while shooting. The screen also has touch sensitive buttons down the side of it. These allow you to use those functions instead of having actual physical buttons. When you first look at this Z50, it, it does feel like in the hand just a smaller version of a Z6 or a Z7. Um, when you first look at it, your mind kind of goes, hold on a minute, this looks familiar, but it just feels a bit smaller. The grip is still really nice and deep and it's easy for me to handle. The biggest thing as well is you've got full functionality, so you've got two function buttons on the inside of the grip. You also have a front control dial and a rear control dial as well. So you can use this camera in a full manual mode, shutter speed on the rear, aperture on the front, and then you've got ISO control at the top. So in a camera of this size, normally, especially with like the 5600 series or the 3000 series, you would have had to rely on just one dial. You had to go up to the 7000 series to get a front dial. It does have an electronic viewfinder. The electronic viewfinder itself is 2.36 million dots. It does also have a pop-up flash. So a first for a Z series camera, pop the button, flash pops up. The actual camera itself does use a new type of battery. So if you were hoping to use the ENEL 14s from the 3000 series or the 5000 series, it doesn't use those. The battery itself is a different battery. It is slightly larger. Um, and in that same battery door, um, take a deep breath before I say it, in that same battery door is a one single card slot. And it is an SD card slot. Make of that what you will. On the top of the camera, we have our usual mode dial that we're used to. And you can also then switch between stills and video with a little switch on the top of the camera. Great thing about this is that it means that you can basically separate stills and video from each other. You don't have to go into a menu and turn it into video mode, or you don't have to go and adjust um, your settings for video or stills separately. If you turn it to video, you then have control over P, shutter priority, aperture priority, or manual mode in video. Whereas you turn it back to stills, and again, you can then be in manual mode, aperture priority, or shutter priority in stills. It works the same way as it does with the little switch that's on the Z6 and the Z7. That's a feature that I quite like. It means you don't have to go into the menu and change your mode when you're shooting in video, for example. In terms of video specifications, we have 4K at 30 frames per second. We also then have full HD 1080p at 120 frames per second. 
The camera still has the same built-in time-lapse options and intervalometer shooting options that are in the Z6 and the Z7. And the menu system is very similar as well. One of the biggest things that this camera does not have that some people might be disappointed by is does not have in-body stabilization. So this camera relies on optical stabilization in the lenses. Both of the lenses that have launched with this camera are optically stabilized lenses and they then have an optical stabilization system that allows them to give you up to five stops worth of image stabilization. It's just built into the lens, not built into the camera. The main reason behind that is to kind of keep the size and weight of this camera down. It is a nice and small and lightweight camera. So I've been quite lucky to be able to have this camera for the past couple of weeks and in my possession and I've done a range of different things with it and had some time to spend with it. And the videos that I'll be coming up will be the similar kind of tests that I've gone through with the Z6 and the Z7. Um, but my first impressions are actually really good. Now, you have to treat it for the camera that it is. Is it full frame? No. Is it going to compete with a Z6 and a Z7? No, because they're different things. Now, the key thing for me is that if you want kind of a small, maybe a secondary body to an existing Z6 or Z7 to use Z series lenses on, this is something to consider. If you want um, just a small DX sensor size body, this is also something to consider because the key thing is, is that you can make use of the Z series lenses. There will obviously be DX Z series lenses and there will also obviously then be the full frame Z series lenses and both of these will mount onto here. This mount is no different to the six or the seven. It is still the full frame Z series mount. Also was announced with two DX specific lenses. The first of which is a 16 to 50 and it's quite small. So this is the 16 to 50 DX lens when it's folded down and compact. It will extend when you zoom that in, but it doesn't get too big and it fits nicely on the camera body, giving you kind of a good lens to shoot with as kind of a good walk around lens. So this is a Z series DX lens. It's a 16 to 50. It is not an S line lens. Just want to, some people have got a bit confused with how the wording of the Z series lenses are. So they are all Z mount lenses. They are not S lenses or S mount lenses. They are Z mount lenses. And of some of those Z lenses, there will be S line versions. And that S line denotes that they are of a higher quality. So far, all the lenses that we've seen have been S line lenses. This is the first that isn't classed as an S line. It doesn't particularly mean that it's not going to be a very good lens. It just means that the aperture might not be as fast or it just means that it might not have as many coatings. But it's still an Z mount lens. It's also launched with a new 50 to 250, so a DX zoom lens. This will then allow you to have this lens for zooming into distant situations and distant subjects. And they fit quite nicely together as a complete pack. Both of those lenses are obviously completely compatible with a Z6 and a Z7. The only downside would be that they would then be cropped into a DX mode so that your megapixels would drop down. So I have some side-by-side -side comparisons with different cameras to show you kind of size. And then I'll do a few other tests as well. So what we're gonna have a quick look at now is just some side-by-side -side comparisons so you can get an idea of size and what the camera looks like with different lenses on and also what it looks like with the FTZ. This Z50 is fully compatible with the existing FTZ and all the F-mount lenses the same way that your Z6 and Z7 has been compatible up until now. You can obviously use DX lenses on the FTZ as well to work on this camera or full frame lenses on the FTZ to work on this camera as well. We'll have a quick look at the size comparisons just to give you an idea of how big this camera is in compared to Z-series stuff and also F-mount stuff.
So, I hope that you found this video useful and I hope that it just works as a really good introduction as to what the Z50 is. If you are particularly interested in the Z50 or even just Z series stuff, then please do subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be a lot of Z50 videos on the way, so I don't want you to miss those. We're gonna be testing things like battery life, video performance, face tracking, eye tracking performance. How does this work as like a, almost like a vlogging camera if you kind of wanted to record yourself? Can you rely on the face tracking? I've definitely relied on the face tracking in the Z6. So could I possibly, for a small, very compact camera for video, could I use this instead of using the Z6? Who knows? That's what we're going to find out. So please do subscribe so you don't miss out on that. As always, if you have any questions, please do comment below. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.